Hey there, Coralospers. Good morning. I'm recording a Coraloscopy short for you today on March 26th. It's Thursday. I know I'm three days into online learning. Uh, kind of the world broke down while I was on spring break, so I'm still only three days into this. So I don't know who needs to hear this out there, but I'm just going to say it bluntly like I do. It's okay to suck at being an online choir teacher. We were not trained for this. We have no idea what we're doing. Most of us are making it up as we go along. Should we be trying as hard as we can to enrich the music education of our students while we're in this situation? Of course. Oh my goodness, yes. We should be trying new things every day. I know I've gone on to my virtual classroom and adjusted rules every single day so far in the first three days we've been tr let's try a thing well okay that's not working let's try a new thing tomorrow and then the third day more changes to the rules trying to figure out ways to make this doable for kids when we aren't able to see them and to see how they're reacting and to hear them in the moment give them feedback in the moment for the things that they're doing that's what our job depends on it's okay to suck at this. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm getting on all these Facebook groups like I do all the time and seeing people really beating up on themselves for not doing the virtual choir when their neighboring school's doing one or not doing this project or, or maybe teachers who are even a generation older than I am not feeling comfortable with all the technology and really going after themselves in a negative way about not being able to keep up with all these expectations and all these things. Guys, let it go. Let it go. We're, we have to do our best in the time that we have with the materials we have and with the situation that we're in. It's not going to help you in the long run or your students for you to beat up on yourselves. I, I know I am, I'm a good choir teacher in the room. I'm good at hearing what they're doing and giving them feedback. I'm good at making jokes to lighten the mood. I'm good at telling stories to get them invested. I'm good in the room. I suck at this. I, and I'm good with technology. The technology part does not scare me. Obviously, I'm a podcaster. I'm fine with video conferencing and recording and mixing and doing all the things. But guys, I'm more interested right now in getting them to be better at something when we finally go back to school. And that's it. That's all I care about. And everything else, I see the bells and whistles that everybody's doing out there, and that's awesome. If, if this lands you in, in, in a sweet spot of your skill set as a choir teacher to be virtual and to do all these things, that's great. That is not my skill set, and I'm not going to feel bad about it at all. I'm going to do my best, and when this is done, I'm going to go back to being a normal choir teacher, doing normal choir teacher things, and I'm going to post a video. Instead of my Zoom meeting, I'm going to post a video of the finished product like I've been doing before. If I'm really proud of something my kids do, I'll, I'll go back to that. Because one of the things that I love about our job and our profession is that our, our processes from one colleague to the next, our process to get from point A to point B is so wildly different. And, and that's the beauty of our profession. When we're in the room with the kids, we all have our own process and they're all so different. And then we get to post that final concert video of something online and share with each other this final product. And then the, even though our processes were so different, our final products are often using the same goals. And we all have this, we all want our choirs to sing in tune, beautiful, resonant, blended sound, emotion, all the things that we all want. We all get there in such different ways. This technology stuff, though, kind of makes us want to streamline our process. And let's be careful with that. I don't want to do, we shouldn't have to all do it the same way. So if you're looking in these Facebook groups and you're seeing how all these other teachers are doing it and feeling pressure, I think that's really my message is if you're feeling pressure to do it the way the other teachers you see are doing it, let that go. Just do the best you can with what your kids need in the moment, with what they're emailing you, with what they're sending you as far as questions. Focus on your students and focus on the end game, which is getting back in the classroom. Hang in there, guys.